some interesting Smash news was recently announced about an upcoming Smash tournament. And no, I don't mean the Mario-themed tournament scheduled for November into December. This is for an in-game Smash tournament happening on September 26th. Over on Twitter, at Nintendo of America wrote, A new in-game Smash Bros. Ultimate tournament has arrived. Challenge Cup September 2020 happens on 926, and we're giving away over 70,000 total My Nintendo Gold Points. Get ready to join online in game from 3 to 6 p.m. Pacific Time on 926. What's even more interesting than this Challenge Cup being announced is that this tournament qualifiers mode that was previously only available in the Japanese versions of Smash Ultimate has now shown up in the English versions of the game. Many people have seen this new icon showing up in the online Smash section of Smash Ultimate. I checked my own game and it's there for me as well. So that mode that was previously only available in the Japanese version of Smash Ultimate is now available everywhere, most likely in preparation for this Challenge Cup event coming up. Nintendo of America went on to give further details and said, When the tournament begins on 926, an in-game banner labeled Nintendo vs. Challenge Cup will be available to select. You'll then be able to enter by selecting online Nintendo vs. Challenge Cup at the top right of the screen to enter. So this Challenge Cup in-game tournament event happening on the 26th could potentially be a good indicator for the time frame around when we might see our next DLC character revealed. Possibly the next DLC will be revealed close to the 26th, or more likely shortly thereafter. The 26th is also right in the middle of the Tokyo Game Show, happening from Wednesday, September 23rd to Sunday, September 27th. And also the 26th is when we're supposed to get more information on Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. I suspect the Smash in-game tournament and getting Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity highlighted further on the same day aren't directly related, like with Breath of the Wild Zelda coming to Smash or something, but rather both happening on the 26th, probably because of the Tokyo Game Show. Anyway, September 26th should be a fairly busy day for Nintendo stuff. Honestly, September itself has been very busy for Nintendo so far. Zippo on Reset Era wrote, Nintendo has been killing it this September, and we're not even done yet. All we needed was some patience. And I agree, after a lot of people complaining about a Nintendo drought all summer, it really feels like many of the things that were going to happen for Nintendo at probably E3 this year have been shown off this month instead. So if a lot of the things we've seen recently could have potentially initially been for E3, could we see a new Smash character revealed soon? Possibly one that was maybe going to be revealed at E3 initially. Honestly, this Challenger Cup in-game tournament event sort of reminds me of the Smash 3v3 tournament that happened right before E3 2019. So perhaps a Smash character reveal would happen very shortly after, possibly even only a few days like it did after the 3v3 tournament for E3 2019. We also have the next set of Smash Amiibos happening the 25th for Japan, the day before the Challenger Cup, and October 2nd for America. If we look at Amiibo theory, generally a character reveal happens within a week or so of Amiibos being released, so the end of September, early October seems like a very strong guess for when the next DLC reveal will be. Something else indicating a character reveal might be imminent for us, over on Discord I was sent... Hey there, it's been a while. As you know, I've been checking the Smash Bros. website every time a new event is added, but Nintendo has not skipped anything at all this year besides the Min Min stuff. Until now, that is. They've skipped a tournament event yesterday. The last tournament was this one. And they leave a link to the last tournament before the most recent one, and it was the Royal Tournament, which the image for it had the number 4028 in the URL. They then go on to say, and the No Projectiles tournament that was announced yesterday is labeled as 4030. I think the next character was supposed to already be revealed by the time of the 4029 tournament, but it's been delayed. If this is true, the next character should be revealed really soon. I've explained this before, but over on the Smash website, if you look at the images used for the events, they are numbered in the URL. The numbers are different for spirit events and tournament events, etc., but they are ordered and have occasionally been released out of the order that they are numbered. Our current close combat tournament event is 4030, but this actually skipped the tournament event numbered 4029. They went on to say, These new types of tournaments they've been doing are called online challenge instead of tournament. The Japanese stream of the Mario 35th Anniversary Direct called the Mario Tournament in November and online challenge. So it seems like it'll be one of these new types of tournaments, which I couldn't find listed on the website at all. It means that this skipped event is not the Mario tournament, and that it most likely is the one featuring the next character, as there's been a tournament accompanying 
every new character since Hero. This, of course, does not mean the Mario Online Challenge doesn't involve Challenger Pack 7, whoever that fighter is, just that we are missing a tournament event, and there is always a tournament event that involves the next fighter. So it's possible the one we skipped could be the one involving Challenger Pack 7. They could still, of course, also be involved in the Mario Online Challenge, but the Online Challenges are different than these tournament events, and we did skip one of the tournament events. So because that Mario event happening in November into December is actually an online challenge and not a tournament, the 4029 tournament really was skipped over here. You can check this yourself if you go onto the Smash website. I'll leave a link in the description below. All you have to do is open up the images for the events and look at the URL string and you can see them being numbered. So since we went from 4028 to tournament number 4030, it's likely that 4029 was skipped over for some reason. Potentially, it's the tournament involving the next character, and that's why they skipped it. They might be a little behind with revealing that character, or at least decided to go out of order with the tournament events. Now, this next piece of info was sent to me on September 15th, and I have to warn you, I do not work at GameStop, so I can't confirm it, but someone sent me images of 15 SKUs for unnamed Switch games in GameStop's system. Usually, this sort of thing happens shortly before a Nintendo Direct, though honestly, after all the stuff we've gotten already this month, I'm doubtful some kind of Nintendo General Direct would actually happen anytime soon. That just does not seem likely to me at all whatsoever. However, I will say the Tokyo Game Show is next week, and I went over a lot of rumored third-party games for the Switch in my Partner Direct Predictions video, and we only saw two of them, Monster Hunter and Ori. So if a bunch of games, potentially some of the rumored games I already talked about, are getting announced for Switch soon, it is possible they could be announced soon, but I doubt it would be in a Direct or anything. Maybe at the Tokyo Game Show, maybe just announced individually on their own over the next few weeks. Again, I can't even confirm the GameStop unnamed Switch SKUs myself, but I was sent these images, so I figured I'd share that around. Speaking of Monster Hunter showing up in our latest partner showcase, I will say I've seen lots of people suddenly speculating a Monster Hunter rep possibly happening for Smash. Before I talk Smash stuff though, I do want to say that Monster Hunter usually has a Nintendo-themed console bundled with it. This has happened many times in the past, and yet Monster Hunter Rise did not show off a themed Switch model. We have rumors of a new version of the Switch that could be happening in 2021, so potentially they're holding off to have a Monster Hunter version of that rumored Switch Pro or Deluxe or whatever they end up calling it. Monster Hunter Rise launches March 26, 2021, and so does Balon Wonderland, so potentially both could coincide with a new version of the Switch launching. Who knows? Anyway, let's talk about Monster Hunter's chances for Smash. Before I get into this, I want to point out that I'm well aware of how the Smash speculation community jumps from one character to the next with whatever game is currently relevant. I'm also well aware that a new Nintendo game does not mean a character is coming to Smash. We do this every single time, moving from one character to the next and assuming they are incredibly likely simply because they are on our minds. Here's an image I saw in my Discord that illustrates this point well, jumping from one character to the next. That said, a Monster Hunter rep has always been a possibility, so think of the new Monster Hunter games as a good excuse to look into the character here, not necessarily just bandwagoning the latest announcement, though obviously it is doing just that. So in this latest partner showcase, we got two new Monster Hunter games shown off. Not only that, we even got a Monster Hunter focused direct afterwards. One thing that really struck me as odd was the Monster Hunter Direct actually replayed the trailers we had just seen in the Partner Showcase. So this Monster Hunter Direct happening directly after the Partner Showcase, I feel was not the original intent for how they planned to show us these trailers. My guess is the Monster Hunter Direct was already done, and was the original way they intended to reveal the two new Monster Hunter games to us. Then the Partner Showcase was decided and thrown together later. Not wanting to totally scrap the Monster Hunter Direct they probably already filmed, they tacked it onto the end of the Partner Showcase. Thus, we got the same trailers twice, and it was a bit awkward. I've been thinking this could indicate that the Monster Hunter Direct might have possibly been something planned for E3 originally. I don't know for sure, but I do feel the awkward repeat of the same trailers indicates something changed from what was originally intended here. Duckmeat over on my Discord wrote, also here's the Reddit leaker. He got it seven hours in advance. And link to this page over on Reddit. So yeah, a lot of the Monster Hunter stuff leaked hours before it was actually shown off. 
So with two new Monster Hunter games coming to Switch and a Monster Hunter series focused direct happening, is it possible a Monster Hunter Hunter could be a potential DLC character for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate? The Hunter from Monster Hunter is one of the few remaining absent third-party Mii costumes from Smash 4 that we have yet to see return in Smash Ultimate. I've speculated a lot about the Geno and Lloyd Mii costumes being missing, so obviously a Monster Hunter Hunter falls into this same category as well. Will we see the Mii costume return before the DLC is done, or will a Hunter be upgraded to a playable fighter? I will say the Rathalos Armor Mii costume might have been upgraded in a sense with the Rathalos Assist Trophy and Boss. Obviously, Rathalos themselves isn't necessarily the same as the Hunter wearing the armor, but we have seen Mii costumes upgraded to both playable and Assist Trophy characters. For instance, K. Rool is now a playable fighter but was a Mii costume in Smash 4, whereas Zero was a Mii costume in Smash 4 and is now an Assist Trophy. Perhaps the Rathalos Assist Trophy is the equivalent of upgrading the Rathalos Armor Mii to an Assist Trophy character, and that may very well be the final fate of this missing Mii costume. Or, potentially, we are getting this Mii costume upgraded into a playable character. It's tough to say. Also, with the Rathalos boss fight came a kind of stage. It's at least Monster Hunter themed, but it's not really much of a Smash stage, so we really almost got a Monster Hunter stage in Smash as well. There was also something odd about the Monster Hunter music in Smash Ultimate. It's listed in the code for Smash in the way that playable fighters would be listed. Most series in Smash without a playable fighter get their music lumped in at the end of the list. However, that is not the case with Monster Hunter. The Monster Hunter series music was listed among the series with playable reps, instead of at the end. Somewhat suggesting at one point a playable Monster Hunter rep may have been considered for the base game. So that's pretty much been Monster Hunter speculation as far as a Smash Fighter goes. It's missing that Mii costume still, unless you count Rathalos being an upgraded version of that Mii costume, and the music was listed oddly. So let's take a look at what new evidence we have after this Monster Hunter Direct. Over on my Discord, Big Brain wrote, Monster Hunter got its own Direct with two new Switch games, and three new Amiibos, at least. Strangely, none of the Amiibos are any main Monster Hunter character. On top of that, they don't show the Amiibo bases, maybe to not allude to a Smash-related Monster Hunter main character Amiibo with a Smash base. I think not showing the bases is probably just because the Amiibos aren't finished yet, but it is true, we did get three new Monster Hunter Rise Amiibos announced, none of which are the actual Hunter protagonist character. Obviously, if that was the design for a Hunter character for Smash, they would get a Smash Amiibo, so it would be somewhat redundant to have one here as well. Of course, characters like Isabel have several Amiibos outside of Smash, but still it's possible they'd purposely hold off to not double up on a Hunter Amiibo. Personally, I think at best, this simply isn't something against the idea of getting a Hunter in Smash. If they had announced a Hunter Amiibo here, I could see that as evidence against the idea of getting a Hunter in Smash, since it would be doubling up. But since that didn't happen, this doesn't hurt the chances of a Hunter happening. But I'm not really taking this as any sort of sign that that will happen. Honestly, I feel if a Hunter did show up in Smash, it would be based off of a lot of different armors and variations or something anyway, and not necessarily the Rise protagonist character. But who knows, maybe it could be. Speaking of this Hunter in particular, DJ Raviesta on Twitter wrote me, I'm sure you saw the new Monster Hunter reveal. What do you think of all that mobility the Hunter will have? It might make for a nice character in Smash, wouldn't you say? Also, the wire bug looks like it could really fit as a nice up B. A lot of the DLC characters have had tether recoveries, and this would obviously work well for another one. Speaking of similar movesets between DLC characters, I always thought Byleth's moveset could work really well for a Hunter character, so I'd suspect if a Hunter was in Smash, they'd have a similar gimmick of switching between many weapons the way Byleth does. If you want to get into really tinfoil hat out there speculation, over on Smashboards, Ultimate Cyborg Overlord wrote, If we want to get super conspiracy theorist in a way that may point to nothing at all, if, gigantic if, if Daisy Glitch is meant to have been them testing something for some character, then maybe, particularly in regards to the Rathalos armor, the Mii costume of which is still missing. So yeah, that Daisy Glitch from a while back does sort of fit the Rathalos armor, but trying to figure out what glitches could potentially point to which characters is near impossible in my opinion, but fun to look at nonetheless. Over on my Discord, I summed up my feelings on a Monster Hunter rep by saying, it would be cool, similar to ARMS, where it feels like a base game 
almost, and we haven't gotten the Monster Hunter Me costume back, though that might have been cut in favor of Rathalos as an assist slash boss. Tough call. Similar to Rex, where it might be an obvious DLC choice, as it's something that likely almost happened base game. But it might also be something that they think has enough representation as is. Very hard to call with those kinds of characters. It's going to feel really obvious in hindsight if they do, or if they don't, add Rex or Monster Hunter or some other base game almost character. It's actually a really tough 50-50 call, but afterwards people will be saying it was obvious either way. We already got Min Min, and it seems ARMS was likely something that just didn't make base game, and has been added now with this second Fighter's Pass. It's possible several spots in the second Fighter's Pass could go to characters that almost made it for base game. Rex, I feel, is in a similar spot. However, it's also possible Rex getting a Mii costume, and Xenoblade 2 music already being in the game, Sakurai or Nintendo might feel the DLC would be better spent getting other things into Smash. It's a very tough call. To me, it feels like Monster Hunter is the exact same way. Is it an obvious choice since it seems to have almost happened base game? Or is it obvious that they rep the series how they want it already and won't readdress it with DLC? In either scenario, with either outcome, I can see people acting as if this was an easy call to make, whether they do or don't add a Monster Hunter rep. But the truth is it's actually very tough to predict these types of characters. They're either extremely likely or extremely unlikely but I do feel like in hindsight, people will be acting like it was obvious both ways. I will also add that a Monster Hunter Hunter has some tough competition. Dante and Phoenix Wright are both often talked about as being frontrunners for another Capcom rep. Monster Hunter is a hugely popular series for Capcom, especially in Japan. However, it's also a series where the player character is more of a generic avatar instead of someone with a lot of personality, the way Dante and Phoenix are both truly characters with lots and lots of personality. Of course, we have lots of generic Avatar-type characters in Smash already. Honestly, not having a Hunter Amiibo as part of the Monster Hunter Rise Amiibos might simply reflect the fact that Capcom sees the monsters as more important than the hunters, and thus Rathalos as an assist trophy and boss in Smash might be seen as the right way to rep the series. So could a Monster Hunter rep happen as a playable fighter for Smash here? Yeah, definitely. That's been something people have been speculating about since base game had that oddity with how the music is listed and the fact that we got a bunch of Monster Hunter stuff, but no playable character. So yeah, a Monster Hunter is definitely possible. However, just because we got this Monster Hunter direct doesn't necessarily mean one's happening next or something like that, but it could. Anyway, that's everything I wanted to talk about in this video. If you guys have any thoughts about the Monster Hunter character, if you think Monster Hunter rep seems likely for Smash, or if you guys have any thoughts about when you think we'll get the next DLC character revealed at all, do you think it's going to happen shortly after this Smash tournament? Do you think it's going to coincide with the Amiibo releases? Or do you think it's like way down the line in like late October or something? If you have any thoughts about any of that stuff, leave them in the comments below. So once again, Thank you guys for all the subscribes, all the likes, uh, really helps out the channel. So if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do so, or like the video, or leave a comment, whatever you want. Uh, until next time, have a good one.